So possession in English, we can have an inflection. That's the apostrophe S and the S apostrophe. The books cover, the books cover, singular and plural. Of phrases, the cover of the book. Verbs, have, own, belong. So we have examples like, I have a book. I own a book. The book belongs to me. All of these show possession. Possessive pronouns. My book, your book, his book, her book. So everything is pretty simple up to now, except that we have more than one way of showing possession. And whenever there's more than one way, it can be a problem. Now the apostrophe, the apostrophe has three uses. To form possessors of nouns, the book's cover. To show the omission of letters. Are not becomes aren't. To indicate certain plurals of lowercase letters, three A's and one B. So this adds to the difficulty. The apostrophe is simple, but it has three different uses. And every time there's an extra use and, or an extra meaning, it makes things a bit harder. The apostrophe, different meanings. And now here's where the first slide, every language shows possession. And one way that English does it is by the apostrophe S. But John's car, that's possession. The car is possessed by John, right? John's cousin. Now, John doesn't own the cousin. Okay? Uh, John's teacher, the same thing. John's eyes. We don't. It, 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 even less than Spanish, we don't own our eyes. And John's picture, meaning a picture of John. Okay, But you can have John's picture is very expensive. If everybody has a, a, a photograph or a painting, a picture, and this one is John's and his is expensive, then that is possession. Now, do you see how it gets a little complicated? But, uh, okay, what else do we have? John's, now here, John's picture was taken yesterday. Here's another meaning. You know, one we can have, uh, oh no, this is, this, I'm sorry, this is a represent, it's not another one, it's the representation. The picture of John. They're like, we we took your picture. Now we need your picture, John's picture. So this is yet a different meaning, and it's all the one form, the apostrophe. Different uses and meanings make the apostrophe difficult. Now, do you need a possessive apostrophe? Make it an of the phrase. So the boy's hat equals the hat of the boy. Okay, that's the Spanish way. And we can see, okay, possessive. Three days journey. Now, it's the journey of three days. But the three days don't own the journey, do they? Okay, so even what seems like a simple rule can break down and one of the difficult things is we're talking about semantic relations. And semantic relations are tricky. There are different lists. There's a lot of semantic relations. So you could say, okay, this is duration of time. It's not possession. It's duration of time. Three days, a week. It's a duration of time, but it's not possession. If the noun after of is a building, an object, a piece of furniture, then no apostrophe is needed. Hotel room. It's not the hotel's room, it's the room of the hotel, but that's the building. Car door is door of the car. That's the thing. 
table leg, leg of the table. There's no possession there, so we don't need the apostrophe. These are noun, noun phrases. A head noun is modified by a pre-modifying noun. So room is the head noun. Now what kind of room? You could say a small room, a large room, a classroom, but it's a hotel room. Hotel is a noun, but it's doing the work of a modifier. And I'm going to spend a couple minutes or a couple slides on noun noun phrases because they're so common in the examples that we'll work with, we'll see some. Nouns as nominal pre-modifiers, frequent and distinguishing feature of academic language. So especially if you're teaching uh, any um, academic English courses, you're going to have to deal with noun noun phrases. Noun noun sequences have increased dramatically and represent the main noun phrase pattern. Arguably the most powerful grammatical resource for making meaning in academic and disciplinary context. It's a mark of developing complexity in writing. An increase in noun noun phrases was part of a linguistic development prompted by a month long or semester long EAP course even if no explicit instruction had been provided. So you're not, if you're teaching possessions, you're going to bump up against noun noun phrases and you need to know a little about them. Okay. Uh, the first noun modifies the head noun, internet speed. Speed is the head noun and the first noun is the modifier. Health emergency. Support network, address book. They're not complex compared to post modifiers with prepositions and participial phrases and relative clauses and all this stuff, but the meaning is tricky. A cheese knife is a knife for cutting cheese. Okay, so there's a modifying, there's a relationship. Steel knife. The knife made of steel. It's not a knife for steel. And then if olive oil is made from olives, what is baby oil? And obviously it's not made from babies, but it's made for babies. So do you see how the semantic relations change? And when we talk about the possessive, well, that's simple. You own something. Oh, well, it, it, it gets a little more complicated when you don't know it, when you're learning the language. There are two approaches, semantic relations and prepositional paraphrases. And um, the semantic relation, and we're talking about possession as a semantic relation between the constituents of a compound is not explicitly expressed and must be retrieved from the sources of linguistic and world knowledge. And it may depend on expert knowledge. So you have to know some language and you have to know about the world. Okay, then there's cross-linguistic inter interference. Spanish, uh, we have um, pronouns agree with the gender of the object. Possess, el libro es mío, la casa es mía. Whereas in English, it's the agrees with the gender of the possessor. So it's his book, her book. And in Spanish, the definite article with body parts, English, it's possession, my leg. Possessive rule. Now we're going to, we've looked at the complexity, but at the end of the day, if we're going to teach our students, we have to teach them some rules. We just can't say it's hard. But I think it's worthwhile to know how complex it can be because we're going to have to work with it for a long time. And uh, L1 students make a lot of errors in possession. It's not just an L2 thing. OK, so here's the basics, right? Add S to the, to the singular form, the student's book. If the singular form ends in S, then add apostrophe S, like James' book. 
but James book is sometimes used. Plural words, add an apostrophe with no S, students' books, students' uh, room with the apostrophe, and plural words that don't end in S, children and women, we put the apostrophe S. So here are some pretty concrete, simple rules we can teach. Some more rules. Uh, add S or S to the last word of compound words, so brother-in-law's house but brothers, and, and it's the same if it's plural brothers, brothers-in-law's houses. Whew. Okay, but these are relatively rare. Uh, the most important rules are singular words add S to the singular form, okay? And plural words add an apostrophe with no S. Posi okay, to sum up, possession in English has some simple rules. But the use and meaning can be rather difficult. And that's why I recommend reading that article. It's free. Um, and uh, uh, Diane Larson Freeman, I think, has some sound ideas that are still used today. But possession is complicated because of different ways of showing possession. Different meanings are expressed by the same form. And there's cross-linguistic interference. And errors are frequent by both L1 and L2 speakers of English. I think that's it. Well, references. Okay. Do you see how I had a lot on each slide? That's why I wanted it. Okay. Okay. So everyone had the handout. And time wise, for us to get back on schedule, we have about 20, 25 minutes, which is plenty of time, I think. Okay. Here are some sample sentences. And these were written by, everyone had the handout, right? These were written by Spanish L1 EFL teachers. So uh, there are a few errors. I didn't correct them because this is actual language use. In other words, I didn't make up an example sentence for you. This, these sentences are real language produced by L1 speakers of English. In this case, they're EFL teachers. So they're, they're quite advanced speakers of English, right? But they still make errors. And let's try to work our way through them and see if we can make any sense of what's going on. Who would like to read the first one? OK. I started my cell phone to get some student cell phone numbers that I have already had. Okay, so the first thing, correct, yes or no? No, it's not correct. No? Everybody agrees? Okay, why is it not correct? Because of the plural students. Some students, it should be plural, so it should be students. Okay, but how, but how, okay, some students means a plural, uh -huh. and also numbers, okay, so it's a plural, and it should be S apostrophe, right? Mm -hmm. So if you write that in the correct form, so here you had to look at the uh, determiner to tell about the. Uh, okay, who would like to read the second one? Volunteer here. Okay, thank you. Okay, correct. Yes or no? Okay, do we agree it's okay? Yeah, yeah. And, and learning, um, we assume they're talking about more than one student, plural, so the S apostrophe. Okay, how about number three? Who wants to read that? Okay. Hmm. This is a tricky one, isn't it? What do you think? Correct? Yes or no? No? Okay. And why not? Why wouldn't it be correct? It's the same case as the first one. It's plural. 
you okay you think it means plural here really not she's not talking about a specific one yeah yeah it's, okay you're right so this is a general reference to students so it's i'm sorry what did you say again being in like Javier's shoes if I'm talking about that specific student. Yeah, if you're talking about a specific student, but if you take it to be uh, general, then we want the S apostrophe. And so here we can see how it gets complex because, well, what do we mean? It can be, it can be right both ways according to the meaning. Okay, how about number four? Yes or no, but correct. The students, the, the article the indicates these are individuals, right? The indicates one, and then students. Okay, in the back here, do you agree with that? I think it's the exact same thing as the question before. If you're a tutor and you're tutoring one child once a week, and I say my virtual activity focuses on developing the student's communication skills, it'd be the student, Imana, my student. I'm so sorry, Mr. D. We need that uh, you use the, the microphone for the. the, the I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. Oh, the I'm student. trying to give the microphone to someone to know English. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, well, let me ask you another thing. Uh, what is being owned here or possessed? Okay, now do you see what you said? Communication skills. Mm -hmm. So, but what is the head now? What? I'm on the skills. See, well, <laughs> remember what I said about noun, noun phrases? Noun. And that we have communication skills is a noun, noun phrase. What's the head noun? Skills. And communication is modifying skills. So what are the students possessing? Skills. Okay. That was a tricky one. And I, I didn't underline skills because I was trying to trick you. And I succeeded. Okay. So... In the back, it depends. If you're, to you can talk about, you know, every week I tutor uh, a different student, and I work on developing the student's communication skills. Then it's singular, apostrophe s. Yes. But what if we said, in all of my classes, I work on developing the student's communication skills. Then it's plural, apostrophe. So do you see what I, when I started off with the Diane, Diane Larson Freeman about here's the form. This is pretty simple. Apostrophe S, S apostrophe. That's pretty simple. But the use and meaning is what gets tricky. And complex too. This, this is in, in isolation. It doesn't have any context that says. Right, right. And, and, and that, uh, that one slide about, uh, now, noun phrases are difficult, uh, and we need to, because there's no overt marker, we have to have um, uh, some linguistic knowledge and some real-world real knowledge, and the real-world knowledge includes, is it a class or a single student? Okay. okay, who wants to read the next one? And be live on, on, on tape. You want to read the next one? For they understand the easy way to the class, remind students' tasks and support them. Okay, so correct or not correct? Yes, if we, if we see the rest of the sentences and support them, so it should be plural, I guess. So okay. In the same case as the first one. 
exactly. So looking ahead to them, we know that's plural. So we got to go back. Students has to be plural, and it's not. It's singular. So it should be s apostrophe. Okay, and do you do you want to read number six, please? Sure. What to do and how to engage or promote our students learning in an easy way. Okay, correct or not correct? Correct? Do we all agree? And can we say why? Start talking about students in general. It's plural. And, and well, there's a marker, or there's how about the word our? Our, our. our is plural, and so uh, we assume we're talking about plural students. Okay, so that should be um, so that's correct, right? Okay. Um, number seven, who would like to read that? Okay. My students' learning experiences is so different in this year 2020. Okay. Okay, well, first of all, correct, yes or no? Okay, no, and and so it's a long way over. But wh why do you think it's not correct? Okay, but why does it need the? Oh, there's no apostrophe. Well, why does it need the apostrophe? Okay, and and so you think, and I'm not tr trying to argue with, but the uh, experiences are possessed by the student or something they have. Okay, and it's plural, so it should be s apostrophe exactly. And what can you say about learning experiences? Now, it even well, well, right, right, but look at the look at learning experiences together. It's what? It's a noun noun phrase. Learning experiences is a noun, and learning tells us what kind of experiences. You could have bad experiences. You could have good experiences. You can have learning experiences. Now, what is it that the uh, students possess? The experiences, and then what kind of experience? The learning experience. Do you see why I put in that little bit about the noun noun phrases? Because they're very common, and to really understand it. Okay. Um, number eight. Who would like to read that? Okay. We had a fine year with learning experiences. Okay. Learning experiences are the Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so at that, oh, good. Mm. And I think it's the same. There's missing the apostrophe at the end of uh, students. And uh, we have the hint with our. Okay, so you think it's incorrect, and you think it needs the S, an apostrophe after the S. Okay. So the noun noun phrase, the explanation you gave before, applies to learning experiences. In learning experiences, we don't need an apostrophe. But in this case, it's because we're talking about uh, students' attention or student ex students' experiences is that we do need an apostrophe. Is that correct? Yes. So even though we have a noun noun phrase as well, because we have students learning is a noun noun phrase. Students' attention is also a noun noun phrase. Well, uh, 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 okay. Uh, with number seven, 
I think learning experiences is a noun noun phrase. And then that's what the students possess. So the students possess the experiences. What kind of experiences? Learning experiences. Okay. With number eight, I really think that's a tricky one. And I'd, I'd have to think, well, I, I have thought about it. What, what do you think about number eight? Number eight. Well, if it is possessive, the students possess attention. Well, okay. If we say our students, okay, our it means students at plural, so it could be an s apostrophe. But do students possess attention? <laughs> and honestly, to me, I, I find that uh, a, I, I'm not sure what I would do if I was writing that. Maybe I, maybe I would change it. The attention of our students. Uh, seriously. If, I, I, okay, but just very, okay. I, I think when those types of questions, like being a bilingual person, is when I just go back to Spanish and I would translate it as la atención de los alumnos o de los estudiantes. So it would be possessive. So in my head, then when I think about it in English, the student's attention, it then becomes possessive because it belongs to them because my my language is not limited by one language. Right. And, and um, I, I can see your point there, but what I was going to, and, and that's a possible thing to do, it helps us. But what I was going to say is write it so you don't have to have a, a I think right, I'm, I'm suggesting writing it the, what, the way you suggested. We, uh, we have to find new ways to get the attention of our students. And then you avoid the possessive form, get the attention of our students. So one, I, I think we can see how some of these are tricky, right? And if it's tricky, maybe try to rewrite it using Spanish to think it through or English to think it through, but write it in a certain way that it's not um, a possessive. Uh, you don't need the possessive S. Okay, uh, we're almost done here. Let's. Uh, we're going to finish at eight thirty, and then that can get or nine thirty. That'll get us back on schedule. Um, right, and we're, we're going to finish on time. Okay. Um, how about number nine? Okay. Affect work. Okay, correct or not correct? Not correct. Not correct. And and what would you do to make it correct? Yeah, I think the apostrophe. Yeah, this is students uh, can can own or have that possibility, and have is a uh, possessive noun. Actually, this is like the other one. I could say. Um, We have some economic disadvantages that are, uh, affect the possibility of our students getting work. So you could change it, but I, I think just putting the apostrophe S yes would work. Okay, and um, number uh, 10. Okay, and this is similar to the other one. Uh, so, do we agree that it's wrong and it should have an apostrophe? S apostrophe. Okay. How about number eleven? Okay. I think it's fine. Okay. Do you want to read it for us? Well, looking after some of the students' basic needs. Mm -hmm. So, it's students is. Plural, and it is correct the apostrophe after the S, and it's talking about the needs of the students. Right, and, and, and this is assuming that uh, you're talking about more than one and not just an individual. But 
in the context, it could be one student, then it would be apostrophe. And the last one. The problems come from teachers, the students, and the students' parents. Okay, this one is a little different, uh, but correct or not correct? It's not correct. Not correct, and how would you correct it? I would say from the students, the positive students. Students are positive. We get rid of that last S. That was an extra S. Okay, so these are examples uh, provided by English as a foreign language teachers whose first language is Spanish, and if they were struggling and having some issues, you can be sure that your students will as well. Now look at the back. And the back, I'm just going to, we're just going to look at it briefly for the next page. Uh, all, of this, all of this data is from the COCA, the Corpus of Contemporary American English. So it's real language, but it's not learner language. And uh, let's just quickly take a look at, how about, uh, let me read the first one. No one, eat, no eating in the family room. Correct or not correct? Okay, there's no possession there. Okay. Uh, one misstep could break a man's leg. Yep, because in English we have man's, it belongs to the man. Our library children's room is largely filled with light reading. As we approach the car, the driver's door opened. Right. If we said that, you know, the car's door, no, but with the drivers, that's a person. So all of these are correct, in my opinion. Uh, and they came from not learner language, the EFL teachers, but it came from language in the corpus of contemporary American English, which is at the bottom of the uh, chart. So we have about four minutes left, and do you have any questions? I, I want to thank you for being patient with the uh, technical issues, but they're resolved now, which is a good part. Questions or comments? Okay, do you want an extra? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm loud. <laughs> so I, sorry, I can wait. Um, yeah, I have a question because with these types of activities that are really grammatical based and we need to get buy-in from our students, like we're all here at like an English conference, right? So we like have an interest in the language, but how do you, what would you recommend for us like to make these types of activities relevant for our students and engaging or what types of activities would you use in the classroom? to do this, that would be like, provide like a worksheet or something like that. Yeah. Well, I, I probably wouldn't go on for half an hour like we did now. So that wouldn't be good for students. Uh, I, I think uh, most textbooks and most courses at some point have the, the possessive is taught. And then, um, so obviously we're going to do that. And then in students writing, I would bring it to their attention. And then finally, um, I would, if I found an interesting example that caught my attention, you know, last night I'm reading the paper. This was, I just read this in the paper last night. Is this correct? If it is, why? And, you know, it, it, but not a half an hour of doing that, but having something is, I'm interested in it. Here's an interesting thing about language. Possession is, they, we should be honest with them, possession is difficult, it's tricky, okay? The form, apostrophe S, S apostrophe, that's pretty simple. But the way it's actually used and using uh, determiners like um, our or some can change, can signal the meaning. And them, after, words, that signals the plural. So it's not just looking at two words, it's looking at a bit of the concept. But I wouldn't, 
a, these sessions, where the Anna, whoever planned the conference made this a 45 minute session. I had to fill it up. We filled it up with 45 minutes of the possessive. I wouldn't do that with a t with kids. Okay. Do you recommend using it more as a routine as opposed to a lesson that's specifically no. directed on it or small groups or during writing time? Or during writing time, uh, because in spoken language, the S is pretty, you know, it's not, um, uh, act, it's, it's often lost in the pronunciation, and there's no apostrophe, obviously, in speaking. Um, I would follow what the textbook said because all the textbooks or courses will have possession at some time. That's where I start first. And then in writing time, you know, going and revising work, then I, I would focus on errors. And then I, as I said, I would, hey, here's something interesting I saw. Uh, 